May 3rd, uh, 2005, I was out with a seventh group team. Um, and our 47, we long, I'll keep this one kind of shorter, but, uh, this is actually probably one of the ones I'm most proud of is we were going in to support the 173rd. They had like two companies of 173rd running this valley in the Arkandab river valley. It was probably a click, click and a half, um, long the, who was there? JTAC, it was a Faustino Martinez with the 173rd. He was like the JTAC, one of the company JTACs. Okay. He was up north. Uh, they kind of stirred up a hornet's nest. And so the ODA I was with, we were going to go uh, as part of like this cordon and search. Um, once the 173rd had this valley locked down, we were going to go search this village. And what ended up happening is our 47 took so much fire on initial infill that we, we had to divert to the south. And then as we were landing yes. in the south, uh, we just we got hit from all directions. I think we took like three RPGs. And Oh, my God. Yeah, we ended up burying like the ramp of the 47. It, it wasn't. It's, I don't know, it's easier just to say like, yeah, we crashed in a 47, but it was able to take back off and everybody was okay. But uh, we we crash landed, hard landed, you know. Um, the 47 took back off, but then crashed like two more times on the way back to the FARP. And then really? from there, they had to take it apart and sling it back to Bagram. Yeah, it was a, a Hawaii um, National Guard 47. Man, good for them. Gee whiz. It had M60s in it, like in the doors. Oh, really? <laughs> Dang. Yeah, um. I spent uh, like 20 something hours on the ground, like the first six, eight hours. What are instead of searching this village, we were kind of on the south side of it, um, of these orchards. And we ended up kind of becoming a blocking force for the 173rd. So the 173rd would just funnel people down to us. And um, we ended up with uh, between Faustino and I, I think we ended up with like six A10 sorties, so like 12 A10s, like four British GR1s four or five Apaches. Um, there was a B1, there was a tanker, like a KC-135. We ended up with a Predator and like two AC-130s that night. Um, nice. Oh, dude, we ran cat. Like it was, it was badass. Uh, <laughs> it was this turkey shoot between us and the 173rd. All we had to do was deconflict like where these 173rd Joes are running around. And yeah, we just, uh, all day we kind of divided the river in half. And Faustino took everything, you know, in like the northern half of the, the river valley we had this like perfect dog leg down at the south and up on the north side so like for units of measure for for talk ons it was simple um and nice. then that night um yeah that night we just shared the ac-130s back and forth we just send them all around just start hitting these dudes that have been hiding in the ridge lines all day we it was pretty cool at the end of it it was like 78 dead uh oh, really yeah, yeah yeah a lot of them most of them i would say the uh the 173rd dudes got you know you we were, yeah. The next day, we're walking up this valley, and like, there's just dudes with little five, five, six holes all in them, you know. And really, you know, that's just that was Joe doing doing Joe things in that valley. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I came across a guy, it's like split in half, and you're like, oh, that one was me. Um, <laughs> did you uh, did you guys take any fire at all in your team, oh, yeah. or was it? Yeah, just I know all day. Yeah. Um, I mean, it oh, okay. Was, like the first six hours, we were we were taking shots from the village, you know, all day. We kept taking fire from this this ridge line. Um, and could never get eyes on it. I was, I would run like these low angle strafes with the A-10s constantly. And then when yeah. I think finally, like, all right, I'm not hearing anything anymore. I'd get back on the village. Um, and then we take fire from this ridge line again, you know, a few hundred meters away. And we found these same dudes that night with the AC-130. Oh, um, good. And uh, yeah, and then we took care of business with <laughs> the AC that night. But it was just, yeah, all day. like it was, it couldn't have been, I mean, once we were on the ground, it was, you know, it was, it was our game. Well, yeah, once you got on the ground after taking what would you say like three RPGs and uh, a bunch of multiple, a bunch of bullets yeah, holes all in that forty-seven. Yeah, one RPG detonated like right underneath. Um, the way the crew explained it to us when we got back was like one didn't detonate, but it like bounced off the tail boom of the uh, of the uh, of the forty-seven and like knocked the transmission offline or something. Whatever that drive shaft that runs from one prop to back to the next, like yeah, yeah. Really they had no throttling capability anymore. Like it was either all or none. So. When they took back off, kind of like rocketed up into the sky, and then we see him drop below this this hilltop, and we're like, "Okay, that helicopter just crashed again." And then we watch him like launch up again and off into the sunset, and we're like, "All right, well, they're not coming back for us, so I guess we're hanging Man. here for the day." Because the first thing probably through your mind was like, "It crashed up there. Now we got to go up there to secure this crash site or something," you know. And like, thank God it took off again, so you didn't have to go up there. I mean, yeah, we watched been... it basically kind of like leapfrog its way off until we didn't make you know see it anymore. And we're like, "Well, somebody else's problem now." It was you know ended up right. in that lot, which is our fob that we were at. We shared with the one seventy third, and uh, yeah, 
And yeah. from the sounds of it, it crash landed on the FARP. And then from there, it just it stayed. Maintainers came out from Kandahar or, or Bagram and basically started tearing it apart. So, Jeez. Yeah. That's amazing. That was a wild trip. I had I got really close with those dudes. Um, uh, still talked to them. I actually just went to one of their retirements. And what's really, trying not to use stupid words, like serendipitous, I guess. Uh, their senior Bravo on that team ended up getting his commission. And then fast forward, you know, a decade or something. Um, my last trip to Bagram as a PJ, uh, we pre poed out to like Jay Bad and, and we were supporting some things that were going on out there in like Nangahar. This is uh, in the time of the Moab. So like uh, I got to watch like a okay. drop from a distance. Um, nice. Well, my former 18 Bravo is out there uh, as a team leader now, as a team captain. Um, huh. And he was running his team in and out of Nangahar. And then uh he ends up small world man oh yeah well no then like a couple months later he gets shot seven times in a green on blue blue on green what are they blue we're green i always get the colors mixed up essentially yeah they're green yeah Yeah, yeah. lit him and his team up with a saw um and he had another pj named nick brunetto with him that ended up saving his life on the on the x and or helping save between him and the delta and then uh he had a former pj at walter reed as his doc when I went to go visit him. So it's like, damn dude, how many times is an air force guy got to save your life? Cause you know, he was- <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's, uh, maintained super close relationships with those dudes. Uh, most of them yeah. since, which was, which is pretty cool. But that was my That's intro awesome, to, uh, to, um, Fort Bragg. So yeah, started off with an intro. Um, <laughs> you know, just get shot down in one CH 47 and all of a sudden things are kind of forgiven maybe. <laughs> 